Okay, um, I just got off the phone with um, my cousin, second cousin, Miss Dixon, and Janet, and um, another cousin. I think he's coming up as a third cousin. I'm still. The hardest part about this is deciphering this tree thing, like learning the relationship between you and a third cousin and the second cousin and all this other stuff when you have no idea about your background like i can tell you who my second and third cousins are in the woodard family but with no no two people to start with on my tree as far as the nash family or you know, just whoever with my birth parents it's hard to decipher like you know how i'm related to who um other than the, the dna matches so anyway uh, melvin is uh a either a third or fourth cousin, I think. I think I'm related to his mom or something. I don't know how that works. Anyway, so we were on the phone and I've been cluing him into what I found so far. And we've been, you know, sharing tidbits. I've been telling him my story and answering questions and stuff like that. A lot of this week has been just answering questions so they can know what information I do have. Um, and it, I hate that I'm not in Louisiana with all of my stuff because I have my um, my records from my adoption records, the stuff from the VOA, all this other stuff is in Louisiana because I didn't want it to get lost in transition to New Jersey or whatever. Like I just panic about losing those records because I may not be able to access them again. But um, and then, you know, my yearbooks and all this other stuff is in Louisiana. So it's like crazy. Like I can't research like I want to and go into places and do stuff like I want to because the one thing she came up with um as I shared in my adoption story that uh the half brother well it said that the half brother because again in the 70s a lot of this may have been made up a lot you know just to make the story sound good but I can only go on the information I have so that's what we're doing um that maybe uh the half brother's dad his obituary or a message on the uh you know like a blurb on the accident may have been in the newspaper in 78 and what i didn't share with her was i need to message her was that you know the shreveport sun was the black newspaper i'm pretty sure they don't have online records so it would probably be having to go actually physically into the uh shreveport sun place and look through stuff and as well as going into the library and looking through microfiche you know and so I have to do that when I come home but yeah it's just crazy like all of the information and all of the names I've been getting I get like 10 names a day now so it's like oh this person and that person and how are they related to me and this could be my first cousin or my fourth cousin or my grandfather or my uncle or it's just oh so overwhelming and, uh, I just feel like I need to organize everything but I don't even know what order is supposed to go into like that's crazy you know like I'm a really uh, I'm, a, I'm a good organizer but when I don't know how it's supposed to be organized how do I do that it's crazy anyway um Janet told me about this um show where they help adoptees find long lost relatives so as soon as she um she, I think she said it was on TLC so hopefully I can find that and they can help me because I, I have no clue where to start and they probably have resources I will never have access to but it's just crazy that um so with them helping me and the Nash cause the other Nash cousin helping me and all this other stuff hopefully we'll get a little bit closer you know as time goes on and stuff like that and I'm just gonna try to contact as many people as I can tomorrow um, because I plan to uh, suspend my ancestry account for a month or so it's like it, I know it's just twenty dollars but your girl is broke right now so twenty dollars is a lot to me twenty dollars is food so it's between food and ancestry ancestry will have to wait I think I can still look through profiles I probably just can't message people so I'm gonna message as many as I can and then I guess you know I'll get the results whenever I get twenty dollars yeah I'm that broke so anyway uh so that's it. So we plan to um, talk again in a couple of days and figure stuff out, you know, update each other and stuff like that. So it's just the beginning, y'all. Like, 
I'm so busy trying to tell other people's stories, and now I'm telling y'all my own. This is craziness. Really is craziness. But maybe I have a great movie in, <laughs> in the end. <sighs> like I said, it's just the beginning. But thank y'all for going on this journey with me and being supportive. And I will keep you posted. It's like, it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning on August 11th. Uh, I was going to sleep, or to at least lay down and try to go to sleep. But then I talked to my best friend for a little while, and um, a lead that a lead that uh, my anonymous cousin gave me was to link up with this group on Facebook called the DNA Detectives, or DNA Detectives is the name of the group. And um, I didn't exactly know what it was, but I, if they tell me I'm going to do something. So, because uh, <laughs> they've been doing this a lot longer than me and uh, have tricks of the trade that I don't quite understand yet. So, I looked up DNA Detectives on Facebook and even though it's uh, made up of a lot of adoptees searching for birth parents, um, it's, it's people who are searching for uh, relatives who are having a hard time finding um, information, a hard time finding or, or knowing where to start, just like I am, knowing where to start, how to decipher all this information we're getting from the DNA test, et cetera, et cetera. I decided, I had joined the group yesterday, but decided, um, to click on it today for some reason. It just said, you know, let me check it out, see what it's about. And then tomorrow, you know, I'll go in depth because I've decided like tomorrow is going to be a research day. And I click on it and it has a really long intro message telling you, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And then, uh, of course, like a breakdown of what you can get from the group and a bunch of resource links and stuff like that. They even have a lot of files, a lot of documents, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is even more overwhelming. It's just like every day I get hundreds of pieces of information, it feels like, and I have to figure it all out. And some days I only figure out a couple of them. That's what's been happening. So, and then I get a hundred more when I've only figured out a couple from the last hundred. But so I kept seeing something called. Um, they were like, "Oh, I have uh, five DD matches and so DD matches." And I'm like, "What the heck is a DD?" And then you know, my journalistic self looked through the groups and lurked a little bit and figured out that um, on Jed Match, if you're a member of the group, you put DD in front of there, so you know that that person is in the group and you can contact them in the group. Um, so I came up with, so I went through all of my matches on Jed Match and looked for the DD at, at the front and I also have to add it to mine, by the way. And I came up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 matches. And it really should be like 14, but I think one person is managing like four different DNA kits. So, um... I came up with over a dozen matches, pretty much, and I've been going through the members list trying to see if I could find these people, and there were about five of them that, no, there were three of them that were definitely in there, and two that I think, because they have sort of aliases, they only used um, initials or, you know, like just their first initial and stuff like that, so that's what I've been doing, and most of these are real distant cousins, like they're like third and fourth cousins, but you know, at this point, anything will help. So, I'm going to contact some of them. I'm not going to do it on Facebook tonight. So, I'm going to uh, contact some of them tomorrow and see if I can get some information and post in the group tomorrow when people are alert and um, everything. Because sometimes when you post into a really active group, it gets bumped down and people don't see it. So, I want to do that tomorrow. But, so that's, you know, another lead. Like I said, this group is probably really, really helpful. I just have to sort through all the information and how it can help me. And so far, at least I've been able to connect to some of the people who showed up on my DNA test. And a lot of them are not on, I mean, they have ancestry on there, but for some reason they're not coming up on my ancestry list. And that may be because I know that different DNA, whether it's ancestry or the other DNA companies you know that that do the dna kits 
some of them have different filters and they only allow, you know, like certain people to show up on your thing. So that's why I guess it's good for you to do Jed Match because everybody shows up even if they have like a piece like 1.3% of your DNA, it shows up. So anyway, so that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'm going to show you like what I'm doing on Ancestry right now as well. Okay, so like I showed you before, I have all these matches on. So I'm going down. Like I've, I've connected with the second cousin already. I've reached out to the third cousin. And I'm going down now to the fourth cousins and messaging all of them. And you see how many there are. So I'm definitely messaging everyone who has a picture and, and all of that stuff. And I'm going to probably be doing that all day tomorrow as well. Just messaging people, trying to get information, giving them my email address just in case I can't be reached on here. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. And uh, I'll be probably doing that for the next few days because there's so many of them. There's over 100. And at first I wasn't going to go through all of the fourth cousins and stuff like that. I think that's as far as I'm going to go though. The fourth cousins and message all of them. But I figure if um, even a fourth cousin, their, you know, their mother or grandmother or somebody may know something. So if I can get one more name to add to the list of people and fill in that tree, then, you know, by all means, I want to do that. At least reach out and get as much information as I can, especially before I'm going back to Louisiana in um, September, the end of September, October, and I definitely want to have as much information, be armed with as much information as possible so I can do a little footwork while I'm down there. Uh, so I'm connecting with these people online right now. And I mean, yeah, it's a process, but y'all know me. You know, I'm going to go through the process. So, and it's really, it's, it's a really good distraction right now because there's so much going on and then having, uh, feeling like I'm failing with Operation Make Another Movie and, uh, it's just like, I, I feel like I'm not going to get the, the film made, uh, with Siren Song. I, I'm, I have no more money to get it edited and, and having the editor want me to pay all over again. It's just like, I can't do that. Like, I'm literally barely keeping rent paid rent and food and you know travel as much as I can I try to walk wherever I can but rent food and travel is basically all I have money for and um then with you know health issues and all kinds of other stuff depression anxiety so much going on and it's like the things that I want to do Sometimes I'm not physically able to do or mental, mentally, it's, I'm just blocked. And so there's so much going on inside of me right now. This is a welcome distraction. At the same time, I do need to pay rent. I do need to keep the bills paid. But like I said, I'm barely doing that. So for me to be able to afford to uh, pay for the film, I can't do that. And then um, all I really wanted to do was to get the money saved I mean, money raised so I could at least book my DP, which is $1,500 by itself. And that's just him. I haven't paid any other crew member, no locations, no insurance, nothing. So to have um, that, you know, it's like I haven't even gotten to the 1500 for him. And I don't want to spend any of that money because you gave it for a reason. You gave it for the film. So I'm not spending any of that money. Um... And I'm not spending on Cyber Song because that's not what it was raised for. But and plus I'm shouldn't be paying again for the edit job when I didn't get what I paid for last time. So anyway, um So yeah, that's where I am now. It's just like so much going on in my head. So for me to have a project to work on, you know, especially since my creativity seems to be shot for right now. Uh, it, it comes in and out, but constant creative mode is just not happening right now. And I really need to do better. But being able to document this and talk and vent is helping. So, yeah, so that's what's happening. And I plan to... 
contact as many people as possible tomorrow and then hopefully over the weekend I'll get some responses and by Monday you know I'll have an update on the update and it's just crazy it's a lot of a lot of work but y'all know me meanwhile I'm still trying to raise money for this film I have so many ideas like I really I really just want to get back on set and get back to creating and I don't know how I'm gonna do it all I can do right now is pray so y'all pray for me pray for me on that pray for me on this project pray for me just period and donate how about that <laughs> all right see y'all later